West Coast swing for the Redbirds continues in San Diego tonight. It's game one of a four game series between the Cardinals and the Padres. The Cardinals in first place by six games and looking for win number 70. A jolt in their rotation. A future Hall of Famer John Smoltz wearing the birds on the bat. A little tune up for him this afternoon as he'll get a start Sunday afternoon against San Diego. That's Al. I'm Dan. Welcome to Cardinals baseball. Certainly a lot of excitement here at the ballpark and the Cardinals finding all kinds of different ways to win. Last night their big slugger Albert Pujols creating havoc on the bases and it's not just Albert that's done that this year but also Matt Holiday back on August 7th. A little deja vu last night as you see Holiday in Pittsburgh as he takes off steals a base the error on the throw allows him to go to third base and then Ryan Ludwig delivers the game winning sacrifice fly and then last night it was Albert Pujols he gets his team lead team leading 13 stolen base the air on the catcher he goes to third base and Holiday drives him in with a game winner a sacrifice fly and the Cardinals would take two of three now you look uh, to tonight and the Redbirds have Joel Pinheiro who is five and oh in his last eight starts getting the assignment tonight Red Petco Park Baseball by the Bay in San Diego. Much more to come in just a moment. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Bud Light. With just the right taste, it never fills you up. The difference is drinkability. By Steak and Shake, famous for steak burgers. By Auto Tire, for the lowest prices in town, we shop the competitors so you don't have to. By Chevy, see your Mid America Chevy dealers or shop and compare at STLChevy.com. And by the State of Missouri Tobacco Quit Line, call 1 800 Quit Now. Rather chilly night here in San Diego, the first of four between the Cardinals and the Padres here this evening. The Padres in the cellar of the West at 51 and 71, the Cardinals at 69 and 53 as the Cardinals just took two of three against L.A. And here's a look at Tony La Russa's lineup. Schumacher, Rasmus, and Pujols. Matt Holliday had the game-winning RBI last night. Rick Ann Keel in there. Mark DeRosa, Yadier Molina, Brendan Ryan, and Joel Pinheiro. The Cardinals face Tim Stopper, who is 1-5 this season. He's our Marshall Wireless starter with an ERA of 3.50. I missed the entire season a year ago with shoulder surgery so coming back from that he's been up and down a couple times in the previous years going back to 05 through 07 and then had the shoulder surgery last year. Well third baseman Kevin Kuzman off and second baseman David Eckstein are leading the majors in fielding percentage at their respective positions Kuzman off at 989. And David Eckstein just one error in 403 total chances. And that's a look at the Padres defense brought to you by Auto Tire. Eckstein at second base. We saw him with St. Louis at shortstop, and the series is underway. And it's a ball to California native Skip Schumacher. And a very cool night here in San Diego. Right. And that is sliced the other way, and it's a leadoff base hit for Schumacher. And you want pressure on this young ball club. Padres you know the 20 plus games out of the Western Division but they are one game over 500 at home nice piece of hitting going to the opposite field Bud Black has seen a lot of turnover but he's got a lot of young players to look at the Cardinals have won eight straight against San Diego and in those eight games they've outscored them by 30 runs last time that you could find a San Diego win between these two teams back in late May of 2008. And the Cardinals recently just swept San Diego back at home and it was Colby Rasmus with that dramatic uh, two run homer off of Heath Bell to win the game hit 500 in that series seven for 14 but how about the job the Padres have been doing helping out the Cardinals they took two of three recently against uh, the Cubs they were pounded last night but won the first two games of that series and then two of three against Milwaukee too and then they lost three straight to the Cardinals so they have been a very good uh, team for the Cardinals. Oh one pitch and Rasmus fouls it back. It's an absolutely gorgeous ballpark being down on the field and talking with the players. They love this ballpark. It is spacious. You don't see a lot of home runs. Deepest part of the park is in the left center field at 401 
And the nearest foul pole is at 322 down the right field line. That's the shortest part of the park. Curveball misses outside, and it's one ball and two strikes. Big win for the Cardinals out last night as they jumped out to a 2 0 lead. Dodgers came back to tie it up with a couple of home runs, and then it was Albert Pujols with his legs winning that game. Well, that was really an exciting win. Not only do you win that series, but you keep on telling the Dodgers, a team you may see in postseason, that you are for real and they can't compete with you. Stopper his first strikeout, the first out recorded in this game. And it brings in Albert Pools. Albert is hitting 321 with 39 home runs and 105 RBIs. We saw it last night as he stole his team high, what, 13th steal? 12th steal? And, you know, just going out there and letting Holiday drive him in. And we talked about in the open how Holiday did the same. Back in August the second, the seventh in Pittsburgh, but you know these guys hit for a lot of power, but they also are such high average guys. 54 games in his career against the Padres, and Albert Pujols is hitting 368 with 16 home runs. And a breaking ball is in there for a strike. His career slugging percentage against San Diego is at 705. That is off the charts. One ball, one strike on the Cardinal first baseman. A short lead at first by Skip Schumacher. And that pitch is taken in the dirt. The Cardinals are averaging just under five runs a game. And as a team, collectively, averages up here the last three to four weeks at 261. Deeper lineup, but it still is the pitching by the Cardinal starters that is doing the job. Pujols with a 2-1 count. Here it comes. Little liner and a foul ball, two and two. And on the hands of Albert, evens up the count, two balls, two strikes. Go back to 2006, and we always remember the Belliard play defensively for the Cardinals at second base, which really set the tone for the postseason as Holiday is on deck. But don't forget about a misplay by Mike Piazza when he dropped a foul ball off the bat of pool holes to give uh, gave Albert another chance, and he hit a home run. Stein turns a double play and it goes 5 4 3. Beautiful San Diego, California. Petco Park is the scene tonight for the Cardinals and the Padres here, game one of this four game series. Tony Gwynn Sr., his statue just outside the park, and his son will lead it off, followed by Eckstein and Gonzalez, Headley, Kuzminoff, and Blanks who's been swinging a hot bat, then Hunley Cabrera and the pitcher Stopper. They will face Joel Pinheiro, who said heck of a year. Record doesn't indicate just how well he has pitched. He's 11 and nine, and his numbers are brought to you by Marshall Wireless. Just a few more run support early in the season, and he would have quite a few more wins. He's won five straight games. The Cardinals are 8-0 in his last eight starts, and 9-1 and one over his last 10. Currently is 13th in the National League with his ERA at three and a quarter. Here's a 2-0 pitch to Gwynn. Takes a ball, 3-0. Gwynn hits from this side of the plate, and they've got a couple of switch hitters in the lineup. Also another lefty in Gonzalez, who's a big bat. Tony's hitting 277, one home run, 11 RBIs. Four pitches and a rare walk by Pinheiro, and it's a leadoff walk on four pitches. Let's take a look at the Cardinals defense behind Pinheiro tonight. Presented by Auto Tire, Holiday, Rasmus, and Keel in the outfield. DeRosa, Ryan, Schumacher, and Pujols on the infield. And the battery is Pinheiro and Yadier Molina. You're going to get to Pinheiro. You've got to do it in the first inning. It's allowed 16 first inning runs more than any other inning. And once he gets settled in, finds that release point on a sinker, then it's about over. But X9 is bounced into six double plays this year. And he has 30 at bats under his belt against Pinheiro. He's nine for 30 with a double against the Cardinal starter. On the season, hitting 258, one home run, 38 RBIs. And that's five straight to start the game and out to visit Molina. Almost a little too strong right now, trying to find the 
Leafs point and uh, the strike zone. Our keys to the game. Joel Pinheiro presented by Toyota and you see his team record 8-0 in July and August and if you really break it down he's 5-0 with a 2.91 ERA in his last eight starts. He has been outstanding and the real key there as you touched upon earlier Al first couple of months did not get a lot of run support lately it's been a different story. Six straight balls to start the game. And you mentioned a rare walk to Gwynn as he has been outstanding in that Walk less than one, the fewest walks per nine innings by any major league pitcher, and he's had 12 starts with no walks. Quinn is six for ten in stolen bases as he stands at first, two balls and one strike. Tony Gwynn Jr., 34th round selection, but did not sign. He went to San Diego State and then drafted by Milwaukee, and the Padres picked him up this year. And we know the story of David Eckstein, the former World Series MVP. Spent four years with the Angels, three with the Cardinals, last year with the Blue Jays and Diamondbacks, and then signed in the offseason with San Diego. Last weekend, he wanted to meet with John Mozalak, and I asked him, I said, I understand you meet, met with him. But I don't need to know any details. Are you happy? And he said, absolutely. So we had a very good meeting. We're, we're fine. Everything is set. And I just said that's all I wanted to hear. Pro wrestling and American Idol fan is David Eckstein. The 2 1 pitch in there for strike two and two. What's his wife? She got any latest? Uh, I saw her at the ballpark here earlier. She's doing some voiceover work along with her acting, but uh, doing some voiceover work for cartoons and some movies that are out there right now. Two balls, two strikes. On the inside corner, and Eckstein, who doesn't strike out very often, looks at a call third strike. So, first strikeout for Pinheiro. Just couldn't pull the trigger in those inside pitches. Last couple strikes were right there. It's a situation here where many teams wouldn't pitch to pool holes for. The longest time the Cardinals might think about that here with Adrian Gonzalez especially with the way that he has been hitting the ball this month six doubles five home runs 13 driven in and hitting well above 400 on the season he's hitting 276 with 33 bombs. It's his spot but doesn't get the call good pitch. It's one thing that Pinero has been very good at is very few walks and also very few home runs. He's only allowed five home runs on the season but. One in each of his last two starts. Gonzalez six for 19 against Pinheiro in his career with three doubles and a homer. Two balls and no strikes. You mentioned the words too strong in talking about Pinheiro. Exactly what are you saying here with what he's seeing? Well, he's a sinker ball pitcher, and normally they like to be a little tired. They stay on top of their the pitches, and the ball really dives to the down in the strike zone. When you're a little too fresh. You, Ball doesn't move as much and it's up in the zone. High sinkers get hit out of the ballpark. Two and one. Gonzalez is 27 years of age, he was born here in San Diego, California, and then spent 12 years of his childhood in Tijuana. His brother just started a rehab assignment after he was out with concussion like symptom. His brother Edgar was hit on the back of the head by a pitch. Those two have been teammates this year here in San Diego. He's a former number one overall pick. And that was back in 2000 by the Marlins, the first position player selected number one overall since A Rod at that time. And Florida traded him to the Rangers, Rangers then to San Diego in a deal that really worked out for the Padres. Padres got Gonzalez, Chris Young, who is starting to come back too, and Termel Sledge. And at the time, the Marlins gave up Gonzalez to get you get for Urbina in 2003, and the Marlins, of course, won the World Series that year.
three balls and two strikes here on Gonzalez. This big ballpark and still 33 home runs. Pinheiro is set. And here comes a 3 2. Quinn is running and the pitch is fouled. Watch out. I think he was ready for it. I think a lot of times you just have to be ready for that sinker. And of course, most left hand hitters are low ball hitters. So they've been keeping the ball well away from Gonzalez. We mentioned that Pinheiro and his run support has been a cause of concern for Stoffer, the Padres starter. It's the same thing. In his one win this year, they got seven runs against Cincinnati. In his other six starts, a total of seven runs. Went off with the pitch, and it's hit high in the air. Right center over to get it. Colby Rasmus makes the catch. Gwynn is back to first, and there's two away. That brings in the switch hitting Chase Headley. Two seventy four from the left side, two thirty right handed for the switch hitter. And with two outs, runner goes. He'll test Molina. Goodbye. Wow. Right on the bat. And Gwynn is caught for the fifth time this season. So Molina catches Tony Gwynn, and that ends the first. Each night on the Toyota Cardinals Live pregame show, we're counting down the 50 finest moments of the Tony La Russa era before the Game tonight it was number 28. Will Clark arrived as a Cardinal homered in his first three at bats at home. Watch Toyota Cardinals live before every game on Fox Sports Midwest to catch more great moments. Here's Matt Holliday. 24 games with the Cardinals and hitting 417. I talked to Hal McCray. I said, what is it about Holliday that you've seen with him that makes him so successful? And Holliday mentioned this that McGuire has made this the number one point of emphasis besides the mental game is keeping his hands close into his body and staying short to the ball. Let's see if he does that here. Has such an aggressive swing but trying to keep his hands in close to his body. And they've been trying to work him in close and get that ball out away from him. He usually hits the ball very hard. You see where he starts his hands and then it's almost like a trigger mechanism as he picks up that front left leg. And he picks up the front leg because he found himself really lunging it, vulnerable to the off speed pitch. And then Holiday is hit by the breaking ball. So the Cardinals will have their second base runner tonight. So, one of the things about lifting that front leg up is that you can't really get out of the way of a pitch until you put it back down. Rick and Kia will be the hitter. Ryan Ludwig gets the night off. If you're wondering about his mohawk, I asked him about it. It has been shaved. No more mohawk. He said he had too much attention with that. He likes to fly under the radar screen. So there's way too much attention paid to that mohawk. I kind of felt with the second strikeout last night that it was gone. And that wasn't the reason, he said. He said it was because of the couple of at bats that you had with runners in scoring position he said no he said way too much attention everybody was talking about it <laughs> why would you think you could fly under the radar screen with a mohawk well, I'll let you ask him that <laughs> 2 and 0 on Ricky and Keel keep an eye on the Cubs tonight they're in Los Angeles Tom Gorzolani against Jeff Weaver Corota was supposed to make that start for the Dodgers, but he was hit by a line drive when he was on the mound his last time up. So Tom Gorzolani goes against the former Cardinal Jeff Weaver, and Weaver has been very good against the NL Central in his career. He's 19 and 11. That's the best record that he has of his career against any division. Charlie Hager, the knuckleball pitcher who pitched against the Cardinals on Monday, volunteered for that game tonight and he will pitch later on in that series pitch very well in his Dodger debut three and one the count here on Ricky and Keel 
Very short lead at first by Holiday. And so Torrey had to think about it because he remembered that back in the 82 playoffs, the first round, you know, the best three out of five against the Cardinals, that Joe Torrey pitched Phil Necro after four innings and you know that uh, it was rained out and Tory or Phil volunteered to pitch the next day and Tory said no but a little bouncer towards the second baseman Eckstein only play to go to first with Holiday running on the pitch and after what happened with the Cardinals beating the Cardinals or beating the Braves in the 82 first round he said he wished he would have taken him up on it. Well, you just saw a shot of John Smoltz who threw a bullpen today and a lot of eyes on John Smoltz who was Tony La Russa and Kyle McClellan Dave Duncan Yadi Molina was down there and Smoltz said uh, in a little press conference in the Cardinal dugout all the things that you want to hear he's excited he feels that he's figured out something mechanically he's been throwing to a, a high school catcher on the side to keep himself in shape. And uh, he will get the start on Sunday for the Cardinals. And just throwing across his body, he kind of started with his his foot, his right foot, I believe, it was that was cockeyed a little bit, and that got him off stride and throwing across his body. But I talked to several, and all the starters, other than Pinheiro tonight, the starter were down there, and I talked to several of them, and I talked to Smoltz too. But they all, to a man, said he's going to help this ball club. It's Dave Duncan I said how much video have you been watching of those Boston starts he said every pitch we've seen everything we've detected a few things we want to work on and we didn't think he could help us he wouldn't be here we feel he can really help us down the stretch well, the interesting things that he also said and and that was like you know what maybe one of the deciding factors of coming to the Cardinals is he needs to increase his arm strength and one way to do that is to add innings so they're going to do it in the rotation but he said if I were coming to a club right and had to from the first pitch had to help that ball club I probably wouldn't be a good fit but if you're going to allow me a little bit of time and with the Cardinals in their six game lead can do that and a need for a fifth starter you know he, he seals he will be ready in a relatively short time to really help this club and that's a walk to DeRosa so Holiday was hit by a pitch, ground out by Ann Keel. A walk to DeRosa, and it brings in Yadi Molina. Molina with a couple of doubles last night and an RBI and a run scored. And he's hitting 296, and he hit over 300 and won the gold glove a year ago. First walk issued by Stoffer. Molina, 296, five home runs, 42 RBIs. Five game hitting streak batting 500 during that time. You know, in that game last night Al there was a crucial decision for Tony La Russa, which was to either go with Denny's Reyes or Trevor Miller to start that ninth inning before we got to Franklin and he went with Denny's Reyes and I know there is an explanation behind that. Yeah I talked to Trevor and and he had pitched in nine of the last ten games. So they told him after Monday, Mary Pitch got the first out of the ninth inning. They said, "You have one day off, hopefully two days off." And so he even said Marty Mason hit his gloves. Is that right? Yeah. So that was the reason why they went with Denny Reyes, and Denny's still the leader of the ball, uh, the staff, and he hadn't pitched in the series. Oh, and two the count on Yadier Molina. Here's a look at Denny's Reyes. He came in and plunked the first man he faced and was out of the game, but very good work once again by Ryan Franklin to close out the save. He's now 31 of 33 in the save department. Remember when David Eckstein told me that he preferred to hit with two strikes on him? And sometimes I think that's the way that Molina wants to hit too. It, it, it almost takes, and David's explanation was the pressure was off me. I already have two strikes. I'm going to be aggressive I choke up anyway and Molina many times too depending on what type of pitcher is out there a guy that throws a little bit harder you'll see him choke up on the bat and a lot of times just try to guide it to right and interesting that both of them are very tough to strike out that's right and Molina is hit by the pitch bases loaded for the Cardinals. 
Well, another pitch gets away, another breaking ball, and Yachty almost threw the left shoulder, the lead shoulder out to allow it to hit him. Last night, Brendan Ryan was the leadoff man for the Cardinals, and he had three base hits and an RBI, and already a visit. Been some long days for the manager, Bud Black, here with San Diego. He's in his third season as the Padres manager. And you might remember their first year of this group, this management team, they were just one win shy of the playoffs. And then last year, only 63 wins, and this season they're 51 and 71. And of course, they've had a lot of injuries. They've traded away some of their veterans like Peavy. Clay Meredith out there in the bullpen. Trevor Hoffman left as a free agent. I mean, rebuilding mode. That pitch is taken low by Brendan. I mean, one thing, Dan, like I pointed out, they're one game over 500 at home. So, I mean, don't take them lightly. But ideally, you want to jump on top of a club like this, and then they believe that they'll look forward to tomorrow. And that misses two balls and no strikes. And the reason why is their pitching at home is nearly a two run difference than what they do on the road. And a lot of people point to the spacious ballpark and getting away with some of the long fly balls. And if you had a team that uh, had that before, you have to go back to 1987, the Astrodome with the Astros. And it's now 3 0. He can't find the plate right now. No. Just doesn't have command of that breaking ball. He's hit a couple guys. Bud Black was an excellent pitcher at the major league level and then an outstanding pitching coach for Mike Sosha and the Angels. A lot of people felt he'd be a good manager, but it sure helps to have some thoroughbreds when you're managing. And a 3 0. Right down the middle, three balls and one strike. So the inning started with Holiday getting hit by a pitch, a ground out by Ann Keel. Walk to DeRosa. Molina hit by a pitch, and the base is loaded here for Brendan Ryan with one out. About like the triple he hit last night. Plug that, plug that gap out in left center. Maybe better this time. Deep left field. To the wall. Grand slam for Brendan Ryan. Four to nothing, Cardinals. Brendan Ryan, his second home run of the season, a grand slam. I mean, it's safe to say his first career grand slam, and look at how happy he is. The native Southern California, he gets one down and in, drops that bad head out there, as you said. Dan, you, you said it better than I. I was looking for the triple. <laughs> <laughs> With the base loaded, you got him in the slam. Brandon Ryan, first career grand slam on his second home run here in 2009. John Smoltz got a kick out of that. He goes, hey, this might be fun. You know, the Cardinals have 40 games left. How many are they going to win out of that 40? Look at the guys on the bench, and Jason LaRue is happy as anyone. 0-2 oh now, the count on Pinheiro, 1-2. and two. That's supposed to be Albert Pujols that does that. He's got five this year, and now Brendan Ryan his first. Yeah, look out, Albert. <laughs> That uh, breaking ball backed up and taken inside. You saw him, Pinheiro kind of you know, leaning, kind of saying, hey, I'll let it hit me too. So two walks, or rather one walk, and two hit batters, and then the grand slam. Four to nothing, Cardinals, and Pinheiro a swing and a miss. Second strikeout for Stopper. Well, if you're traveling and can't catch the TV broadcast, catch all the action on your computer at MLB.tv. Over 100 live out of market games per week. For complete details, visit STLCardinals.com where baseball is always on. Of Ryan's five career home runs, four were solo shots. And his first ever home run was at Shea Stadium in New York. And now he picks up his first ever grand slam in front of family and friends here tonight. 
Skip Schumacher has 17 tickets out, he said tonight. Well, you know, uh, I'm sure Jim the Cat Hayes will now take a tour, have Brendan go take a tour of where that Grand Slam landed. That was Pat. Was it Pat? That was Pat. Oh, oh okay. Pat will be with us on our next road trip, and maybe they can reminisce about this. Yeah. <laughs> we enjoy those. It was fun with those uh, two did in uh, Shea Stadium, when or rather they, uh, now City Field. When they lead to a home run, they are enjoyed, or lead to a victory. And he hits that one out of one of the, the hardest ballparks to hit a home run, too. He does it here at uh, Petco. You know, the right fielder, Kyle Blanks, for the Padres. He was a one man wrecking crew against the Cubbies on Tuesday. He hit a. Oh, this is. And a swing and a miss by Skip Schumacher. Kyle comes up. We'll talk about his two home runs. Brendan Ryan with three hits last night and a grand slam here in game one of this series. Now up to 26 RBIs and two home runs. And a switch hitter, the left fielder Chase Headley leads it off against Pinheiro, and that's a ball outside. Headley from the right side hitting 230, from this side of the plate at 274. Kuzminov on deck, their third baseman, and then Kyle Blanks. You mentioned that Blanks has uh, had a couple of home runs over the wall and uh, also inside the park, too. That's right. You know, both against the Cubs. Monday it was a, a walk off, three run home run over the wall. And then on Tuesday, he hit one out in center field and it caromed off the wall and went towards right field. And he got an inside the park home run. Sharply hit to Brendan Ryan. A few steps, fires to first for the first out. John Smoltz in uniform tonight met with the media before the game. And here's just a portion of what he had to say. What you're going to get with me is you're going to get the same intensity, you're going to get experience, and you're going to get whatever capacity that I can give to help a ball club. And they're going to be directing that in the way that um, I need to get some innings. There's no doubt I need to get back on the field. It's been about 18 days. I've grinded it at home and thrown to a, a high school catcher and, and the likes. But I think, um, you know, this refresh, this start, my mind cleared, uh, will give me an opportunity with, with St. Louis being in a nice spot, have a little bit of patience to give me some innings and see what happens and see where um, they see, I uh, mean, to fit the, the club the best. He is third among active pitchers, 3,044 strikeouts, fifth in wins, 212. Over 200 wins, over 100 saves, DeRosa to his left. And a Major League Baseball record 15 playoff wins. So it's not like you're going to get a guy that's going to be scared one bit. He can't wait to get in this pennant race. Now, he is his splitter and his slider coming out of his hand really nicely. And Carpenter was one of the guys that was talking about, you know, and really said, hey, this guy can help us. Uh, one of the things Marty Mason said is he's got to get back to trusting this fastball. But you know everybody's excited and you know just the wealth of knowledge blanks out to deep left and the Padres get on the ball it just clears the wall how about this Kyle blanks nine home runs now since the all star break most by any National League rookie the big man takes him deep picked up his first major league home run on July 21st that was in the ninth inning. He had three innings, uh, three home runs in a six game span. This is his third home run this week. You can't believe how big he is. You stand up there, you see how big he is. Now, the ball is up, it's in the middle part of the plate. You know, just, you know, if it's, if it's down a little bit and it has that downward tilt, when it's up like that, a sinker ball kind of slides across the zone. But Blanks is a big, big man that uh, right now is opening some eyes with that power. And another ground ball to DeRosa. Over to Albert Pujols. The Padres get on the board with a home run of their own. Blanks with his ninth.
Well, this was the day before the Matt Holiday deal. The Cardinals were a game and a half in front of Chicago and Houston, two and a half in front of Milwaukee. Cincinnati still in the conversation. And since then, look at this. Six games in front of Chicago. Houston has traded Pudge Rodriguez, nine and a half games out. Milwaukee, 10. Cincinnati, a free fall as they're 17 games out. And obviously, Matt Holiday has made a huge difference. But uh, as you talked about, Al, the, the pitching of the Cardinals has made a big difference as well as Colby Rasmus takes a breaking ball in there for a strike. And Rasmus struck out his first time. Are the Cardinals and the Los Angeles Angels are the major league best 17 and 7 since July 23rd. And that was the day that the Cardinals acquired Matt Holiday. Tony's always been about pushing in the second half and the schedule really has done him a favor too with all these off days in August. This team should be well rested for the push and the Cardinals are 20 and 11 since the All Star break. So a lot of Cardinal fans here in Southern California as well. It's a very sparse crowd on this Thursday night but Cardinal Red is here. And the one two is hit out to deep right center field Gwynn on the move. He's got good speed out there and makes the play. Well Jim Hayes is joining us here in the third inning and uh, Jim obviously the big news John Smoltz and you had a chance to visit with the newest Cardinal and if John didn't know what to expect from in terms of reaction from the crowd in St. Louis he got a taste tonight because there was about 20 Cardinal fans down there absolutely going nuts when they saw Smoltz in that Cardinal uniform uh, obviously you know he's friends with DeRosa and Wainwright they've told him what he can't expect but uh, you talk about excitement from him he knows and, what to expect and the rest of the team too I mean this is a team that has gone out and gotten players so they've been through this before but you could see that extra bounce that you see sometimes when a new piece is added they're very excited to have this oh, guy. There, there's no doubt about it and this as you say not only a piece but here's an, another future Hall of Famer. Oh no doubt and, 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 and a real class act you know I mean he, he's the real deal on the field but he is genuine off the field too. And if you want a glimpse of what's going on I saw Carpenter and Smoltz walking side by side from the outfield into the dugout and you look at those two and you think all right maybe Smoltz can be what the Cardinals are hoping he can be in that uh, starting rotation one two to pull holes and a swing and a miss now you spoke with John Smoltz you see him pictured there with Carpenter after he pitched he did a little bullpen session how did he feel he felt great I talked to Tony uh, about it too and he said uh, that Smoltz looked great he said uh, he got a he said Yachty saw him and uh, was very pleased with what he saw same for for Dave Duncan obviously you know there's been a big layoff for for John so he knows that and that's one of the reasons why he wanted to come to the Cardinals he says because there is a margin for error he knows he's not ready to go right now because there has been a layoff he's still kind of fine tuning things but boy is he excited to be here and during the that layoff working with the high school catcher and I think it was at Georgia Tech you know he feel he felt like he found a little mechanical flaw is something that now you know what it is now you have to correct it with your bullpen work but you know that's just great to see all these guys talking and one more wealth of knowledge to help these guys out. Oh two pitch to Holiday taken up and away Holiday hit by a pitch and scored on the grand slam and Smoltz knows that the numbers when you look at what he did in Boston weren't good he said there's no way around it but it was the way he felt he felt like he was closing in on what he needed to to do to get back to you know being the pitcher he was. Yeah I thought uh, in the conversation he had with you when he was talking about you know if you have to judge me right now I'm not going to I'm not going to be there but I'm getting closer we have the leeway here with the bigger lead that I can find myself and you know he's going to be totally honest and you know here's a Hall of Famer that never wants to embarrass themselves so if he feels he's getting closer it's just a matter of time before he'll put it together and not just and not just the lead in the central but also the fact that a Carpenter's here a Wainwright's here Pinero's pitching well he knows it's not up to him with this team and that was something that uh, was something he wanted to be part of. I thought it was interesting is that uh, it's not just this year he wants to pitch beyond the season depending and, and, how he finishes up and the Cardinals will have their first shot at that. Oh if, no question you know, because he's under contract to them they're just paying the prorated major league minimum. 
And you think they're negotiating uh, the price on number 29? <laughs> but how, how about, you know, Chris Gardner is the ace of this ball club, and he said, hey, I'm willing to give my number up for him. Smoltz That's told me the number means nothing to him, and he <laughs> knows that there's a very good pitcher that has 29. Kuzminov, nice play to his left and takes the hit away from Holiday. Jim Hayes is with us. We'll talk more about those two when we come back. 4 1 Cardinals, midway through three. Six, a serious number. The Cardinals score six. You get a 20 ounce coffee, found a frozen drink for just a quarter the next day at On the Run and Mobile. Win or lose, Cardinals score six. You score 25 cent drinks at On the Run. Jim, Dan, and Al with you. And this is Everett Cabrera, switch hitter, hitting 273 on the year, the shortstop for San Diego. Then we'll see Stopper and Tony Gwynn. Jim, we'll see uh, Kyle Loesch get the start. Tomorrow, and he's been dealing with the situation in that forum, hasn't he? Al calls it fatigue, and today uh, <laughs> Kyle said it was fatigue. This is a historic moment. <laughs> Al is right about something. But he said it wasn't just straight fatigue. He had a problem with the forearm and the muscle in the forearm not firing the way he wanted it to, to fire. So he's been doing exercises, manual exercises, to try to strengthen that area of muscle. And he feels a little bit more confident that uh, when he goes out there tomorrow, he can go deeper and, and have a good outing. Yes, I said you were right, Al. No, I was just, you know, muscle doesn't fire because it's fatigued. The 3 1 pitch. And he's also said he's going to change up his routine in between starts. Well, that was part of it, too. He, he's going to be a little bit more active. You know, he, he always does the cardio. But uh, he's going to do more strength training in between uh, just because he feels like he's got to get that muscle stronger so it doesn't fatigue. <laughs> 3 2 pitch. Take it a little bit low in the second walk issued by Pinheiro tonight. I'm sure he's got to be a little frustrated first time through this lineup that uh, he has walked to. And Dave Duncan doesn't like this strike zone of our home plate umpire tonight, Chris Guccione. And one thing you don't want to do is walk Cabrera. You know he has 18 steals and 20 attempts, but they already got they already were introduced to Molina's shotgun arm once tonight. It's yeah. interesting. The Cardinals add a Cy Young Award winner and John Smoltz. You have Smoltz and Carpenter. The Phillies add Cliff Lee and Pedro Martinez, Cy Young Award winners. The White Sox, former Padre Jake Peavy and Bartolo Colon, part of that team, and. San Francisco with Lincecum and Zito all four teams you're talking about having a chance Al to go to postseason play and Cincinnati put a little ringer in San Francisco's hopes as they beat them two to one today and Colorado won their game over Washington so Colorado is now two games in front of San Francisco in the wild card lead Florida by the way started play tonight three games out it's bunted but foul. With all the success that uh, Carpenter's had this year and Wainwright and Cy Young talk for both of them and now the addition of Smoltz, I think it's almost easy to overlook what Joel Pinero has done. That's a mistake because he's been so good. The Cardinals haven't lost a game he started since June 28th. He's been a model of consistency. Absolutely, and we showed that graphic earlier about Pinero where he could be have a, a handful, I mean, maybe even five or six more wins. Or just the run support he's getting right now. Strikeout and batted bat there by Stoffer, and that's two strikeouts for Pinheiro tonight, and it brings in the top of the lineup and Tony Gwynn, who walked back in the first and then was caught stealing. This club is only hitting 241 as a team, and they average under four runs a game. You better have very good pitching when you're doing that. That's right. We do have the defense that uh, will help a pitching staff out. And a big ballpark. And a big ballpark, which helps pitchers. I, I find it interesting that when John Mosellock pulled off the deal to get Lugo and, and Holiday and DeRosa, I asked him, I said, this has got to be it. Remember, it was about a week before the, the end of the trade deadline. He said, I always leave myself a little wiggle room, a little extra change if something would fall in our lap. And that something is John Smoltz. I mean, who would have thought this that you would have Lugo who's been part of a World Series team DeRosa who was terrific for the Cubs holiday one of the best hitters in baseball you add John Smoltz I mean you go back to a year ago fans wanted to see help from the left side of the bullpen the players wanted that and now the players are saying 
we've got enough. <laughs> we we got to go out and win. Runner goes again. They'll test Molina. Throw to second. Nice pick by Brendan Ryan. And the tag is there. The second time Molina's gotten his man. Might not want to run on that guy. Goodness. Well, this time give Brendan Ryan a lot of credit for helping Molina as it's a short hop, tough play. He gets it and makes the tag ahead of the sliding hands. So a real big assist to Brendan Ryan. And but give Molina a lot of credit. He is really a weapon back there, and his peers recognize it as he's been voted the best defensive catcher in the National League. They are down 4 1, but yet the Padres trying to be aggressive here, but they're doing it probably against the wrong guy in Molina. Yeah, and the combination with Pinero also. Gwynn skies one to right center. Colby's got it. Free game show tomorrow. Who's on? We're going to try to get Wainwright. We'll see. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Bud Light with just the right taste. It never fills you up. The difference is drinkability. We're just east of the gas lamp quarter here in San Diego. In downtown San Diego's East Village across the Harbor Drive from San Diego Bay. Absolutely gorgeous night for baseball. A little on the cool side here in San Diego as you might imagine. Four to one Cardinals here in the fourth. And a breaking ball in there for a strike to Rick and Keel. One of the neat aspects of this ballpark Petco. And look out. The Western Metal Supply Company the building down the left field line. Which dates back to 1909 they've got the team store in there there's 12 party suites. Restaurant and tonight an empty rooftop hanging breaking ball and a base hit for Rick and Keel into right field and Rick is one for two tonight Saturday afternoons made for baseball this week Fox brings you the national game of the week Alfonso Soriano and the Cubs look to keep pace in the NL Central they'll take on Manny and the Dodgers Fox Saturday baseball this week at three and it's three central only on Fox. Here's Mark DeRosa walked and scored on the grand slam by Brendan Ryan back in the second inning. Once again Adam Wainwright very good last night and Jim talked about the fact that he'll be in the conversation for that Cy Young Award if the season ended today. And Wainwright without two curveballs that were hit over the wall would have won that ball game. He was terrific. Outstanding but uh, rescued by his teammates. And disappointed that Wayno didn't get to his 15th victory but the team got their 69th. 2 0 pitch. They didn't get their first base hit until the sixth inning with one out. The Dodgers. Yes sir. Dan we got 40 games left. How many wins do the Cardinals need to acquire. Good question and, and. Having said that I mean you also have to at this point Tony says you do take a look at some of the other teams now in the final two months if the Cardinals play. You know 500 baseball the Cubs have to do this I mean the Cubs. Not to say they're running out of time but they've really got to start picking things up. And talking with people around here I mean there are comments about the Cubs. That they are a mess. You know Lou Pinella went out to make a pitching change the other night and whether or not he didn't realize it but he left the dugout and no one was warming up. No one was ready. No one no one had been getting up to come into the ball game. He started to walk out and then had to turn around. You know that's kind of a mistake. Yes it is. 3 2 to DeRosa instead of check on Ricky and Keel. But uh, Leo DeRosa when he was managing the Cubs one time went out to make a pitching change and the guy he wanted was not warming up so he brought him in anyway. He did have a pitcher warming up but it was the wrong one. And he brought in the one, the guy that was sitting down. So two walks issued by Stopper. And 
Stopper is also hit two tonight, and it brings in Molina. He hit Molina back in the second inning. You know, last year it seemed like the Cardinals really, I don't know if betrayed is, is the proper word, but they were hurt by the front office not making acquisitions. And maybe that's a little bit what the Cubs are feeling. But boy, this club really knows now that the front office and ownership have done an unbelievable job to put them in position not only to win the Central Division, but in a position to go all the way. And it's up to Tony and his staff to get this team ready. But this this team is so battle tested. I, I'm sure they don't have they have a job to do, but this team is ready for it. One ball, one strike on Molina. Padres came into existence in 1969, and one of their bright spots, as you see, Pinheiro, but one of the Padres' bright spots over the years, the war hero, and Jerry Coleman, 84 years young, Al. And, and yeah, Jerry is just such an interesting guy. He played second base in a lot of those great Yankee teams, and then a war hero. He was a pilot. Over 120 missions. Yep. And World War II in the Korean War. And and it was interesting that you know Jerry Coleman came over and talked to us and was asking about Khalil Green, and he said we had, or at least he said he had no idea that Khalil had, you know what what he's going through with his anxiety disorder. And Molina loses the bat. I, I talked with Khalil as he walked over from the hotel to the ballpark and. I said, what's this like for you? And he said, it is, it's bittersweet. You know, I, I yeah. had some good years here. I obviously was, you know, disappointed in the way that things finished up. And certainly he has a lot of friends over on that other side. I, I thought that was neat to see over the weekend at Bush Stadium, all the different players as they take BP. And a lot of times you'll see friends come over and shake hands. Some guys do it. Most guys do it, not all, but it seemed like just about anybody he played with with San Diego a year ago came over to shake his hand. It's just like his uh, current teammates now. Everyone is extremely supportive and trying to help out in any which way. A 2 2 pitch with two on. And a strikeout of Molina. That's five on the night for this right hander. And it's up to Brendan Ryan, the grand slam hitter back in the uh, second inning, as that was his second home run of the season. He got a grand slam the first time. Maybe he can get a three run home run here. But we talked about it, you know, a little bit last night. Just a great defensive player he's become. In our minds, he's the best defensive shortstop in the league. But you have to give him credit for what he's doing offensively. Batting 294. Right. So two runners on. And the first pitch taken for a strike. They're in the third at Dodger Stadium, and the Dodgers lead the Cubs two to one. Oh, one pitch to Brendan. This is on the outside corner. You see the defense and big gap in left center field. But Black took over for Bruce Bochy, who was here for 12 seasons with the San Diego Padres, 12 years. And this team is got a long way to go. Taking low and away, two balls and a strike. Playing career of 15 years in the big leagues, 121 wins. He was with the Mariners, the Royals, Indians, Blue Jays, and the San Francisco Giants. He was a hot commodity you know, as a pitching coach and future manager. Brendan hits it sharply to short and a force play out at second and on to first double play six four three nice turn by Eckstein second double play the Cardinals have hit into. It's hit on the hill beyond the right field wall and it's our radio shack. What do you know here at Petco Park. Padres are one of four teams that have never tossed a no hitter and one of three that have never had a player hit for the cycle. Isn't that odd? Sure is. Came into existence back in 69. I knew about the uh, no hitter. 
And I did not know they never had a cycle. We've had some pretty good hitters come through here, including Gwynn and Winfield, a couple Hall of Famers. Look at the batting gloves that David Eckstein uses. And you may notice the lack of pine tar on his bat. Those are NFL wide receiver gloves that he uses. The fly ball to right. And the reason why is that when he was in the minor leagues, he said he couldn't afford batting gloves, baseball batting gloves, so he went with the wide receiver gloves because <laughs> they were more durable. For in depth Cardinals and all star game coverage all season long, get Game Day Magazine, the official team magazine of the Cardinals. Number to call 345 9000 or visit stocardinals.com slash publications. Clay Kirby, in your early years, uh, the Padres had a no hitter going into, I want to say, uh, I think through eight innings. And Preston Gomez was the manager and was heavily criticized for his pinch hitting for him. As you look at the defense, both infielders up the middle are well on the outfield grass. But he pinch hit for him, but you know, they were losing one to nothing. He had a no hitter intact, but they were losing and he pinch hit for him, and everyone was up in arms, and Preston was all about trying to win. I can't believe the Mets. Do not have a no hitter with the great pitchers that they've had through their history. Yes. One and two the count here on Gonzalez. And they came in in 1962. You know we were talking about the power of Gonzalez to the opposite way and maybe one of the reasons and you see the shortstop on the outfield grass Brendan Ryan and Schumacher very deep at second base is that he grew up here in San Diego I mentioned that but he idolized Tony Gwynn. Four is number 19 and he said he used to imitate him hitting off a tee going the other way and he said Gwen used to do that so I'm going to do that and a lot of people believe that that's one of the reasons and he explains that as to why he has that power to the opposite field. Third strikeout for Pinheiro. Here's Chase Headley. So he's gotten Gonzalez twice with a fly out to center and a strikeout and here's Headley the switch hitter grounded out to short. That pitch is taken a little bit low two balls and no strikes. Headley has really been swinging the bat well of late but uh, it's been described as a soft 300 plus. You know, some of these guys are, are such great athletes like the pitchers like a Joel Pinheiro and he's been asked why pitching why did you get into that and he said two reasons his dad Gill was a Puerto Rican professional pitcher and he said at the age of 12 that was number one he also said at the age of 12 he broke his ankle running to first as a position player so he went <laughs> to the mound he said pitching was a little bit easier on that ankle. And boy has he been good this year. And you just wonder, and you look back, and in, in when he was not selected for the Puerto Rican team as a starter, and the fact that he said, "Okay, if I'm, I'm not going to go as a reliever. That would hurt me." And the Cardinals, uh, whether he wants to admit it or not, I think the best thing that happened to him was being the entire spring training with St. Louis, being healthy. And getting off to a good start. Three and two, the count on Headley came in in great shape too. Well, and he, and he helped motivate him. You know, he last year, remember, he was injured early in the season and never really caught up. His conditioning was, and, and I find that hard to believe for these athletes. And I know how hard they work. But okay, you spend a couple stints on the disabled list. But you know, Tony always mentions how he never caught up in his conditioning. I don't understand that. A 3 2 pitch. And a ground ball hit to first. Pujols will take it himself. And a nice inning there for Pinheiro. He'll lead it off when we come back in the fifth. 4 1 Cardinals. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Kia Motors. To learn more, visit Kia.com. By the Casino Queen Hotel and Casino, home of the loosest slots. 
And by the new third pound Angus burgers. They are here. Try, try one for yourself today, only at McDonald's. Pinheiro struck out his first time up. And the first pitch by Stauffer is taken for a ball up and in. Pinheiro, Schumacher, and Colby Rasmus. Cardinals lead it 4 to 1. Brendan Ryan with a grand slam tonight. Two balls and no strikes. Pinheiro leads the majors in fewest walks per nine innings. He's under one per nine innings, and yet he has walked two tonight. At the knees, that's a strike, two and one. Brewers made a trade as they traded Billy Hall to Seattle for minor league pitcher. Ruben Flores. Remember how good Hall was back in 2006? He had 35 home runs. Milwaukee thought they had a budding star and gave him a four year, $24 million contract. And now all of a sudden he's playing for Seattle. I remember they sent him down a couple weeks ago. It's near the Cardinal bullpen and out of play. Or, or was it they designated him and then they yes. sent down J.J. Hardy? But I, I think that, you know, it's a good deal to get him out of that organization, give him a fresh start. Billy's still a relatively young guy. Here's a 2 2 pitch to Pinheiro. Foul ball. No one caught his left hand as he's shaking it. Yeah, bounced, came back and hit him in the hand. Is that where you saw it? Yeah. Well, it's not the right. And year of the season hitting a buck 70. Here's a 2 2 pitch. Right down the middle and a strikeout. So six strikeouts. Happy birthday to Rusty. It's his 50th birthday party. Right here at the ballpark. <laughs> With all of his friends right back there behind him. That's right. A whole bunch of empty seats, and the guy <laughs> sits right behind the cameraman, blocking his view. Here's Schumacher. Talked to Jose Okendo about Skip today. And he said, I told you, Dan, if Schumacher would be around 20 years around this time of the year, I'm quitting. And Schumacher, as he'll pick up extra bases here, hits it inside the third base line and going out the shortstop, Cabrera. Yeah, it's a very good play by the shortstop. And in some of these ballparks where they have the stands down the left and right field area that jettison out towards the playing field, you've got to, you know, you've got to be a smart infielder and see where the ball hits on that side wall that the corner outfielders are running down in case it gets scoots along the sideways so it's easier for the shortstop to get the ball as you see the carom either left fielders going back towards the corner and the right or the shortstop comes out there and makes the play a good hustling play so the second hit for Skip Schumacher but my point being is that they really felt in particular Jose that Skip could do this that he could be the second baseman that he's turned out to be and he said the one thing that has really impressed Jose Okendo is the turns at second base by Schumacher. He said he's been terrific in that regard. Yes, and, and remember in spring training, he really worried about it making the conversion because he didn't want to hurt the pitching staff. And then you were a little concerned, okay, you know, the, the ball right at him that was hit hard, he never really had a problem with that because it was reaction. But the ball that was kind of the a little squibbler he had to come on maybe had too much time to think about it. That's when he kind of messed up in spring training. But now you, you just assume that he's going to get to every ball he gets to and he's become a very you know tough on that turning the double play. He's done that a very very good job and Tony even commented in the last homestand that he he thought he'd be playing this well next year not this year. Two and one. A difference in the pitch count, isn't there? Ninety two to fifty six. 
And a 2-1 pitch to Colby Rasmus on its way. Albert Pujols on deck. A 3-1 pitch to Colby Rasmus. Right there, we'd like to see him be a little bit more aggressive as the right-hander, Craig Burke, begins to loosen. Right here, he'll be lucky if he can get through five innings under 100 pitches or thereabouts. Remember, he's coming off the shoulder surgery, missed all last season. Was he wasn't even on the roster, not invited to spring training, so he's had to work his way all the way back. It's tough on young guys, and that's what Smoltz is trying to do at age 42. Three and two the count. And Colby just got a piece. They were talking about how them, uh, the uh, Padres don't have a pitcher with a no hitter and some of the other categories that they're missing out on. They only have had one MVP and that was Ken Caminetti back in 1996. Season that the Cardinals faced the Padres in postseason play and beat them and then lost to John Smoltz and the Braves in seven games. That's tapped foul. Three and two the count. And Colby hits it into deep center. Gwynn is back near the wall, and he's got it. Schumacher will tag up from second to third. Hit that to one of the deepest parts in the ballpark. I'll remind folks, next Saturday night, we're back home. August 29th is photo night at Bush Stadium. Gates open at 4.15. Bring your camera and arrive early to go on the field to snap up-close pictures of all your favorite players and coaches, as well as Fred Bird. The 2006 World Series trophy will be there. It's photo night Saturday, August 29th. Always a popular night at the ballpark. Well, Hal McRae was talking to me before the game about how much uh, more consistent Pitching there has been with pools ever since Matt Holiday has arrived, and how much more carefully these pitchers have to pitch to Albert. Well, many times prior to Holiday, they just intentionally walked him. You know, he set a single season Cardinal record for intentional passes at 36 this year. He broke his record of a year ago, but with Holiday, you know, they stopped giving those free passes, and he hasn't had. Uh, an intentional pass in almost 20 games. Pujols hits it out to deep right center. Gwynn on the move, and he makes a sliding catch. Tony Gwynn, great speed out there, takes a hit at an RBI away. Good play. It's time to bring you up to speed with the AT&T Rapid Rewind. AT&T, the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered. And here we are in the bottom of the fifth. And while we were away, Mark DeRosa with another ground ball in his direction and puts away Kevin Kuzminov. Here's the replay off the bat of the third baseman of the Padres. High bouncer, but he corrals it. Little crow hop, throws on over. And that is... Five ground ball outs tonight for Pinheiro. And here is Kyle Blanks. Said he's a big man. He's six foot six, 285 pounds. Some of the kids out there in the beach in right center field here in San Diego. 
a 2-0. They'd have enough sand at the real beach. But kids love it out here, don't they? Yes, they do. And beyond that, that's a foul ball. There is some seating above that. There's a little grassy area that you can sit down and put a blanket down and enjoy the ball game. It's a heck of a setting, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Of course. San Diego is just such a beautiful city. Turned into a, a very, very nice downtown where you know, 40 years ago it was a very seedy downtown, a real naval town. And it is really cleaned up well. Three and two. Four to one Cardinals thanks to the grand slam by Brendan Ryan. The three two is pulled foul. Pinheiro is a pitch away from walking his third. Just don't think about that when Pinheiro is pitching this season. And so good in that regard. And the Cardinals have had 15. They lead the major leagues 15 no walk games this year. And led by Pinheiro came in as the best. In the. Majors at uh, fewest walks per nine innings. Here's a ground ball to shortstop Brendan Ryan. The way I watch Brendan Ryan, the way I would characterize it is that you're watching a young player coming into his own with tremendous confidence right now on defense. Very good point, Dan. You know, he just, you know, he slings the ball, but I talked to Larry Boa. And we were, the Dodgers were in St. Louis, and he was very much in favor, but, you know, Loves to watch him play. Plays with that great confidence. He has told you he has. Uh, he feels more confident in his ability to throw strikes over to first from that uh, sidearm slinging motion. You would think that would cause more problems. Ball would tail or sink right. a little bit. It normally does, but in his case, he's more accurate that way. And we've seen several times because of his athleticism and throwing off balance, where that's the only way he can throw. And it's it has helped out. Now one of the things that Jose Okendo and many of the infield coaches around the major leagues will tell you is that an infielder should be able to look in get the sign and have an idea of where the pitch is going to be at for instance with a righty up if they want to go to the outside portion of the plate you see Ryan going there and this can help us right there right there that pitch should tell you that maybe he can cheat a little bit because he thinks that that hitter is going to either try to either hit it to the opposite way or pull the ground ball to you. And and I remember Jose when he was playing second base, he actually would be moving as the pitch was coming in because of that what you're talking about. Well, so we'll finish that conversation and the pitcher's side of that when we come back. This state in baseball history Mark McGuire becomes the first player in Major League Baseball history to hit 50 home runs in three consecutive seasons. This state in baseball history presented by Schnucks. Four to one St. Louis. And our Chevy call to the bullpen is Greg Burke a right hander into the ball game for San Diego. Be interesting to see how. He fares against the Cardinal right handed batters as he's been able to hold his own against them 200 average for the lefties are batting 347 against him made his major league debut with the perfect seven, seventh inning in uh, versus Cincinnati back on a 16th just to follow up on the the point of what the infielders have to do the pitchers also have to hit their spots yeah that does help. So if you set up outside he needs to hit outside right there's a good example too. the catcher was slightly outside and that pitch was on the inner half. Yeah you, you, know, you get a lot of infielders and they just get a feel for their pitcher. You know they've seen. And a long time opponent you know they'll they'll sit there and just kind of know where he hits the ball and they'll actually move. 
change of position as the pitch is on its way because of where the location. So. And that fan caught the ball and now he has zero feeling in his right hand. Oh and two on Matt Holiday. Holiday was hit by a pitch and scored on the grand slam in the second also grounded out to third. So Stoffer gives the Padres five innings tonight. There's a rope in the left center field that will roll all the way near that 401 sign. Holiday on his way to second. Holloway said Holiday says I'm headed to third and he is safe a triple from Matt Holiday. Oh, one of the cardinal rules is do not to sin is do not make the first out at third base and Holiday took a chance and gambled and won as a leadoff triple here. You see he had the play in front of him so he can make the, the decision he knew he was going to have to turn it on and he slides hard. Runs hard slides hard he sees the Kuzman off to the outside the outfield part of the plate so he slides to the inside part or not of the plate but third base bag Ricky and Keel one for two tonight singled in the fourth and grounded out to second in the second infield drawn in four to one Cardinals nobody out good chance for Ricky and Keel. Sitting on 33 RBIs. Chicago has tied it up in the fifth, 2 2 at the Dodgers. How about you? I've been impressed with the speed of the center fielder, Tony Gwynn, tonight. Oh, no doubt about it, especially in that ball by Pujols. That ball slicing away from him, but with that great speed, he tracked it down and made a very difficult play look relatively easy. But do remember back in the first he was caught stealing and he's just one of many this year by Molina. There's a big difference with speed to track down fly balls and base stealing speed and it really not speed it's 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 more of a the instincts the gambler instincts that you know you're not afraid to make a mistake 2 one pitch and Keel pops it up left side it is playable Kuzman off there. Let's take a look at tonight's Aflac trivia question. Aflac. What three other expansion teams entered the league with the Padres in 69? You had the Expos, turning the Nationals, the Royals, and the Seattle Pilots, which became the Brewers. Burke is kind of one of these rare guys that uh, signed with the Padres as non drafted free agent after attending a tryout camp. By the way Matt Holliday had just two triples the entire 08 season with Colorado he's two at the Cardinals in the last week and a half. Isn't that something. Yeah. Little check swing by DeRosa in a foul ball. Got, got two pretty uh, heady guys doing battle here DeRosa. Penn University and the Wharton School of Business. And then you've got uh, Burke who went to Duke. Had a double major in business and sociology. Infield in for Mark DeRosa. 0 1 pitch inside. I mentioned that tryout. Joel Pinheiro had a tryout in Miami that was rained out, and then he drove across the state to Clearwater. And the Mariners have been on record saying we wouldn't have signed him if he didn't try out for us that second time. Isn't that something? Sure. Here's a 1 1 pitch to DeRosa. Kind of a slow, methodical delivery, and then he rushes to the plate. He is 6'4, 216, from New Jersey. Important 
in the hole here one ball and two strikes. <laughs> Trying to get him to chase two and two. You know Dan one of the things that Pete Prenzy the Cardinals strength and conditioning guys does is he has a you know a grip you, you grip a device and it measures your your strength. Who do you think the strongest was in the team. Well that would make me think forearms and I would probably think pools that would be the logical guess. Well it's a, it's a little disclaimer because. Pujols remember his his right hand is not that strong because he was afraid to grip it because of his elbow but his left was extremely strong at about 160 pounds. The Rosa was next at 150 until Holiday showed up <laughs> and broke the machine at 180. <laughs> you know what that would have been my guess <laughs> if I was thinking you're right. I mean he his upper body I don't think television does it justice. Just how big he is in the forearms. And he didn't break it, but he went off the sure. charts. And I asked Pete, I said, well, what, you know, what is, uh, what would you say, you know, the, the, you know, a strong athlete, what would, what would be the, you know, the average for a major leaguer? He said about 115. And he's at 180. He's at 180. The Rosa was at, at 150. Albert with his left hand was 160. And you know how how big Pete Frenzy is, and he was a you know college quarterback, and you wouldn't know it by his upper body. And but uh, Pete said, I said Pete, how how what do you test at? He said, oh, about 140. That and is I, saying something. Yeah, but Albert, you know, they said, you know, we we give him a break because you know he didn't because of his elbow, he didn't want to really grip it and put any kind of strain on there, which once again he's showing. You know, an understanding of how to protect himself. And here's Molina hit by a pitch and scored in the second. And also struck out. What do you think about starting uh, DeRosa here? I would because I watched uh, Hunley throw today. And you're also trying to avoid the double play, right. too. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I watched him throw. He's, he's got a strong arm, but. But it really not much accuracy. Runners at the corners, one out. Molina looks at a ball. And you see how this pitcher is very slow at the beginning of his of his motion. And then he tries to rush it to the plate, but it seemed like you if you get a good jump out there, it'd be worth the gamble. A 1 0 pitch to Yadier Molina. 2 0. This is what certainly has to frustrate Bud Black, as we talked about over a decade, the major leagues as a pitcher, as he has seen his staff tonight. Well, they've struck out six, they have walked three and hit two. Now, Bert in the Mid Midwest League had the fewest walks allowed per nine innings. Just over one. Nobody can help you if you can't throw strikes. There's a 2 0 pitch to Molina. 3 0. Brendan Ryan on deck. Will he have another shot? With the bases loaded. Albert was running on a 3 0 pitch last night. And a strike to Molina. And three and one. Did you see how slow he is? Yeah. And Molina also very good going the other field, uh, opposite field, but right now on a 3 1 pitch, a good pitch to run on. Because Molina makes such good contact, 
If he hits the ball on the ground, you're trying to avoid the double play by starting the runner. Here's a 3 1 pitch to Molina. There goes DeRosa. And a ground ball hit to the shortstop, but they can't turn two. They start the runner. Run scores to make it 5 to 1. And by starting the runner, they avoid the double play, and Holiday scores the fifth run. 43rd RBI for Molina. And starting the runner makes all the difference in the world. So the shortstop starting to cover second base and was able to regroup and get back and get the ball, but he can only go to first base, and the Cardinals pick up another valuable run. Here's Brendan Ryan, Pinheiro on deck, and they'll intentionally walk Ryan here, the eighth place hitter, to get to Pinheiro. Hit grand slams, you get that respect. Oh, don't yeah. You? Oh, yeah. One of your buddies is inside that Padres dugout, Ted Simmons, 13 years as a player in St. Louis. Eight time All Star, and he's one of the bench coaches for Bud Black here in San Diego. I think Jim Hayes ought to talk to. To Simba. So I did not see him today. No, he's fourth all time among switch hitters and RBIs. And that's it. I mean, he was he was as pure a hitter in the 70s as you would ever want. All right. Johnny Bench was the he was the poster boy of, of catchers, you know, because he was the combination of Tremendous defensive catcher, a home run hitter on those, you know, the big red machine. But Teddy was a better hitter. So runners at first and second with two outs for Pinheiro and a strike with a fastball. Pinheiro struck out twice tonight. Five to one Cardinals. Here comes the 0 1 pitch. 0 and 2. Really struggling to draw here in San Diego. And there are sections that are empty. And this is the fewest amount of fans we've seen since the ballpark opened back in 2004. Lynn Hoppen, the third base coach, and a long time, you know, I mean, he's been around a long time and also a Southern California native. Trevor's older brother, you know, he, he said they're they're going to struggle to get to two million this year. Mm. Pinheiro lines it to short. Catch made by Cabrera. Cardinals add to their lead. It's five one. Bud Light, what's on tap? The difference is drinkability, and Kyle Loesch makes his 18th start of the season and eighth since coming off the disabled list back on July 12th. Dealing with that right forearm flexor, one in three ERA around five since coming off the DL. And we'll come your way on Friday night at 8.30. The Cardinals and the Padres tomorrow on Fox Sports Midwest. So here is Joe Pinheiro. He's given up one base hit, and we're in the bottom of the sixth. Everett Cabrera, Stauffer, and Tony Gwynn. Cabrera walked and then was caught stealing. Molina is caught two tonight. The Cardinals are, are getting very good reviews, by the way, on Jaime Garcia, who's trying to make his way back. Yeah, and pitching at the AAA level as he's recovering from Tommy John surgery. Jaime can make things very interesting, you know, next season. Right. And I, I'm sure that they would love to get a look at him this year in September. And I mean, it's kind of that fine line where. You don't want to bring up too many people if you're in a pennant race, but I mean, do you really feel that he could be part of your rotation, having a lefty in your rotation for next season? And I talked to some of the Cardinal personnel, and, and there's, like you said, it's mixed reviews on what they should do. Some feel, hey, let him get healthy through August and shut him down until the offseason. He wants to work things out, get him ready for spring, and there's a strikeout, his fifth of the night. Or do you let him come up and and the thing is Al he's working right now as a starter and he would not work as a starter in September so you know th they think yeah. about warming him up and all the different things that he'd have to go through right that, that 
that's a good point right there. Luis Rodriguez is going to pinch hit here for their pitcher Burke and looks like Joe Thatcher is going to come in for the top of the inning. And there's her only lefty Thatcher out there. That's why I kind of thought assumed it was it was uh, Thatcher. And Rodriguez bounces it. Schumacher spins and throws. Nice play. That's the ground ball right there. They say is the toughest. And Skip has said that it's been the toughest for him spinning either the first, the ones to his left, or on the double play ball, the ones to his left as well. That's a good play. You know, a lot of times people think that you could just stick somebody that doesn't have a very strong arm at second base, you know, like the Eckstein. But there are so many off balance throws or throws where you're going to the outfield whether it's up the middle or towards right field that you have to spin and throw that it really at times you need a strong throwing arm and and Skip definitely has that. Gwynn pops it foul. Now Tony Gwynn Junior came to San Diego in exchange for Jody Garrett that made three stints with Milwaukee. And he doesn't shy away from being Tony Gwynn Jr. He welcomes it. He's, and his dad says he's got very good talent, but probably thinks a little bit too much at the plate. Let his natural ability uh, just take over. He's got a pretty good pitching coach. I mean, a hitting coach. There's Mr. Padre. That's a beautiful statue and a pretty good likeness of Tony's stance. And a base hit into center that scoots away from Colby Rasmus and Gwen can fly holiday will have to track it down and quickly gets it back in. So Tony Gwen winds up at third with two outs and a misplay there by Colby Rasmus single two base error by Colby his sixth of the season and it really looked like he laid back on the ball and then when it carried out there. And he got a little too close to it. Got to knock it down some way. And saw where he thought it was going to short hop into his glove. Good hustle by Holiday to back up the play and get it back in. Two out, so Pinheiro still has a chance to escape this if he can retire X time. Colby was telling me before the game that his brother recently threw a no hitter in the minor leagues. In the Atlanta Braves system. Yes, and he was a former number one draft pick. That's right. Younger brother. David Eckstein. I remember Scott Rowland hit a team best 421 in the World Series. David hit 364. He had three doubles. Ground ball to skip. And that does it for San Diego. Gwynn is stranded. Cardinals lead at five to one. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by AT&T. Switch to the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered. The Jeep summer clearance is here. Get to your Jeep dealer today for some of the best deals of the season. The top of the Marriott. Working out hard into the late hours this Thursday night. <laughs> and it's 5 1 Cardinals, top of the lineup for St. Louis. Schumacher with a single, a double, and he struck out. This is Joe Thatcher. This is his third stint with the Padres. He was acquired from Milwaukee as part of the Scott Linebrink trade back in July 25th of 07. He's a former rascal. River City Rascal player. He's from Kokomo, Indiana. He actually pitched at Indiana State University. Yes, he did. I remember Tommy Underwood and his, his brother, his brother uh, Pat. They was, they used to be from Kokomo, Indiana. They were also left-handed, so maybe something in the water there. <laughs> Here's a one-two. And a swing and a miss by Schumacher. Didn't look comfortable at all, did he? No, he didn't. Strikes out for the second time, and it brings in Colby Rasmus with Albert Pujols on deck. Left-handed batters batting 170. 
against Thatcher and righty's about 292. Let's see if Ludwig's going to pinch it here as Kobe's going back and Ryan is at the on deck circle. We see Albert Pujols is on deck following Ludwig and in talking with Hal McRae I said who does Pujols remind you of and he said well I'll put it this way. The three best hitters I've ever been associated with ever in my career and he said I'm not going to give you the order he said but Albert is in the top three. He said Tony Perez which he played three years in Cincinnati with he said because he, he could knock in a run from the parking lot. He said that Albert can do that and he said the other guy is George Brett in Kansas City clutch and dangerous and uh, that's a pretty great comparison to Hall of Famers well, and I think he's almost saying that he's a combination of the two. <laughs> and that's what makes Albert so deadly is. Yeah you really just can't find anybody that he really reminds you you got to put combinations like that together. The first pitch in the dirt to Ludwig coming off the bench tonight. Eighteen home runs for Ludwig this season. And a ground ball hit to second. Next time there to make the play. Eckstein really just guiding the ball over to first but I did notice on the double play earlier in which he had to really hurry up he let it rip but for the most part he's just really you know just it's almost like he's throwing a dart over there it's just very very easy with it. Well, Bud Black's going to make a pitching change but you know what bears repeat again is Eckstein is only committed one error right. on the season. Which will come in for the Padres and good work by Thatcher as he gets two outs and Albert Pujols coming up it's 5 1 in the top of the seventh. Edward Mochica is into the ball game. This would be his 56th appearance. You might remember over the weekend in St. Louis, in Sunday's game, he Mojica, excuse me, left uh, with a contusion behind his right knee, and that was struck by Albert Pujols. Mojica took it right behind the knee, and and then he made the play and had to leave the game for Bud Black. So, so you wonder now, does Bud like him? <laughs> you know. You know, try and get even with Albert, or is he trying to knock him? You know, give him Albert another shot to hurt him. Remember what he did to Chris Young last year? Right, that was scary, wasn't it? Ball that hit off his head. And of course, Chris really hasn't had much luck since that time, staying healthy. On the disabled list right now. First pitch to Pujols is taken upstairs. Albert tonight has grounded into a 5-4-3 double play. He is struck out and also flied out to center. Better show your new teammate something. Albert may not. Uh, maybe maybe John Smoltz didn't think. Well, this guy's not so good. The 2-0. Oh, oh, I think he knows. Oh, I think so. <laughs> Probably sitting there going, you mean he does make outs? <laughs> They're still talking, aren't they? Now it's Wainwright. But, you know, Smoltz was a mentor, Wainwright, on the golf course and in the clubhouse. Ooh, 3 and 0 is swinging a miss. Behind the scenes, apparently, DeRosa and Wainwright were very vocal in trying to get. John Smoltz to St. Louis. A 3 1 pitch. 3 and 2. Well, you know, you really worry about disrupting chemistry. You know, young guys see it a little different than the veterans. Veterans saying, hey, we want a guy that can help us. The young guys sometimes go, hey, it cost one of my, my young friends a job, but this is a win win situation for the Cardinals. A 3 2 to Albert. Pool holes, a high fly ball. Long way to go for Gwynn. And he's got it. Time to stretch. Cardinals go in order. The bat of Albert. He's got some dents in it. Five to one. Five to one, St. Louis in the bottom of the seventh. Whether it's the cards game or practice, stay cool and hydrated. 
wherever you go this summer with a reusable water bottle from Ritz. Make sure to purchase tickets for Friday, August 28th against the Nationals. 25,000 fans will receive a Cardinals Ritz water bottle. Adrian Gonzalez leads it off. And a swing and a miss as Pinheiro has only allowed two hits. The Cardinals only five base hits tonight, but one of those a grand slam. The bat of Brendan Ryan. Cubs and Dodgers tied up 2 2, and they are in the sixth. Adrian Gonzalez tonight is fly to center and also struck out. First Padre to have three 30 home run seasons in succession. Pinero just hasn't been quite as sharp tonight, and he's got. Uh, Five strikeouts. That's a little bit more than normal, and not quite getting the the ground balls that you see, but still pitching very effectively. Ball's been up a little bit more this tonight. Yeah, it has more so tonight than we've seen in the past. Cardinals trying to maintain their six-game lead in the Central, if not make it seven tonight. Dodgers trying to hold off the Cubs and keep their three and a half game lead. The Phillies lead by five and a half. There's a line shot over to get it. Brendan Ryan throws to that? Albert, and what a play on both ends! Wow. Is we've said it as recently as tonight that we think he's playing better defensive shortstop in the National League, the best. And here's another ball way up the middle. Looks like it's a sure base hit. Look where he gets it, and he throws that ball almost hitting the umpire. And at the other end, the soft hands of Albert Pujols to complete a nifty play. And it took him a little bit to, uh, and what I'm saying here now is to, to lead Albert Pujols. Pujols, it wasn't like he was standing at the bag. He had to lead him as he was going towards left field. It's only natural. <laughs> Albert's going to say, well, that's a base hit. I think Albert was shocked. Yeah, you know, he's thinking about, well, I'm going to trail the runner. <laughs> you know, And he's still the first base umpire, Mike Winters, that that's a pretty good play. <laughs> I, mean, I don't think Albert thought this had any chance of, of Brendan Ryan getting this. See how he, late he was there? Yeah, he, he kind of did take a step, but you know, I think you're right that it's like, you know, and and really you, I guess your first instincts would be go to the bag and and be inside the base path so you can watch the runner, make sure he steps on first base, and then kind of trail him to see you follow him around the bases. A two one pitch, tank and load, three and one. Now look how deep he is playing right now. Brendan Ryan is about a good five yards on the outfield grass. I think John Smoltz likes that. Like, hey, throw strikes. Let the let my defense do the job for me. But I, I asked Brendan about that the other day. I said, do you normally play this deep? And he said, not quite as deep as he is right here, but he will be a step or two on the outfield grass and then naturally when the pitch comes he walks into the pitch which takes him right to basically where the dirt is. That's pretty well hit out to center field. Spacious ballpark Rick and Keel puts it away and Keel is in center. And Ludwig is in right. Let's turn now to our GMC quote Dave Winfield in the house tonight tonight. Now that we're at 500 there's only two ways to go. Dave Winfield as he went directly from the University of Minnesota right to the Padres you might remember. He was drafted by three professional leagues. Unbelievable athlete. Yeah I mean football basketball and baseball and becomes a Hall of Famer. So for Dave Winfield the good news up Highway 5. As Mar Russell Martin hits a grand slam, and the Dodgers are up 6 2 against the Cubbies. And Dave Winfield has his number 31 retired. Tony Gwynn, number 19. Number 6 is retired. Steve Garvey, 35, is Randy Jones. And, and 42. Course, yeah, Jackie <laughs> Robinson, retired in baseball. Winfield and Gwynn, the two players that are in the Hall of Fame. Randy Jones, 35, won a Cy Young 
Garvey. That's the leader of their ball club when they was the 84 National League champions. Well, that's six strikeouts for Pinheiro and Brendan Ryan. Another look at this terrific play to his left. Pitch in for Healthy Smiles with Delta Dental and the Cardinals. Purchase a $2 raffle ticket for a chance to win an autographed baseball by Albert Pujols and join the Smiles League. The proceeds benefit local charities that help kids have healthy smiles for information. And to buy your tickets, please go to smilesleague.com. Joel Pinheiro, last eight starts, is 5-0. With a 2.91 ERA tonight, only two hits allowed as we start playing the eighth, and the Cardinals have a 5-1 lead. A swing and a miss by Holiday. Pools and Holiday struggling on this road trip. Holiday did get his second hit of the trip. He's two for 11. Albert, one for 13. But they can, their presence in this lineup is felt even whether they don't get hits. One ball, one strike on Matt Holiday. Tripled and scored back in the sixth. That was up at Greg Burke. He's been hit by a pitch, two runs scored tonight. The 2 1. Ooh, watch out. It's in front of him. Gathers it and got him just by a step. I'm sure Holiday wants to see a replay on this one. That was awfully close. Well, he hustles all the time and comes out of that box. Pitcher recovers. And. Real close play right there. Mike Winters saying he got him. Let's see if we get a better look there. Ooh, I think I don't know. You think so? I thought they did, but it's close. Just goes to show you he doesn't have the luxury of two replays. Right. But, you know, we're we're going 50-50 on it, and he has to make a call immediately. Here's Ricky and Keel, who was shifted from uh, right field to center. And the first pitch is a ground ball to Gonzalez, who has won a gold glove, by the way. Steps on the bag for the out. St. Louis Cardinals and the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services and Fox Sports Midwest have joined together to encourage young people not to smoke because once you start, it's hard to stop. Strike out tobacco so we can all breathe easier. Call the Missouri Tobacco Quit Line at 1 800 Quit Now. Cardinals all time against the Padres looking for win number 250 tonight. Mark DeRosa has been on base three times. He scored a run with three walks. He's one for 10 on the road trip, but he's starting to pick it up as he's hit in eight of the last 12 games, over 300. 1 0 pitch. One ball, one strike. If you think about the impact of Cliff Lee. For the Phillies, he's 4-0.82 ERA, and it actually statistically is slightly better in the ERA than what CC Sabathia did with Milwaukee at this time. We were talking about that tonight. Uh, you know, it was incredible what CC did, and then now Cliff Lee's numbers are even better. Unbelievable. Is he, he doesn't have quite the complete games. Right. I think but his innings still. pitched are a little bit down, but I think he, he may have two complete yeah, I innings. Mean, but I mean, it's like when he had like about four of his first. And remember how Sabathia finished where he was pitching on three days rest down the stretch. DeRosa chops one to short. And Pinheiro back to work as we move to the bottom of the eighth. The Cardinals lead San Diego 5-1. Back in San Diego, and let's take a look at our Cardinals game recap presented by Infinity. Joel Pinheiro getting the start for the Cardinals and looking for win number 12 tonight. And Pinheiro has struck out six. 
Big blow in this game, a grand slam. That was back in the second inning. Matt Holliday has scored twice tonight. And Brendan Ryan with a dazzling play defensively and also the grand slam. And he has certainly been one of the stars of this ball game for the Cardinals. Pinheiro pitching now here in the bottom of the eighth. And the first pitch is pulled foul. Watching this big man hit, it looks like his swing is long, but if he would connect, it's going to go a long oh, yeah. way. I watched him in bank practice, but I was still marveling at the size and the, the pitch count at 95. You see, pretty consistent, even though he's got a couple walks tonight, which is highly unusual, but only two hits allowed. You know, we've talked so much about the sinker. That last pitch is the one that Dave Duncan was telling me the other day is the one that's getting overlooked right now that's been really the consistent. Slider. Yep. 0 2. Another one, but it's popped up. Left that one over the middle of the plate, but gets away with it. And Schumacher makes the catch on the line. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the St. Louis Cardinals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. What about the big three of the Cardinals. You, know, you got Carpenter, Wainwright, and Pinheiro, all three in the top 15 in ERA in the National League. And how about the Winto? Wainwright 14, Carpenter 15, and Pinheiro trying to pick up number 12. Huntley has grounded out and struck out. 0 for 2 tonight. Is it still odd for you looking in that dugout and seeing John Smoltz wearing the Cardinal uniform? But I, I guess I like it. Well, I love it, <laughs> but I mean, in this day and age, I guess nothing should surprise you. But yeah. uh, there he is. I, I think that's one of the the aspects of today with the way guys move around especially when you think about Tony Gwynn you know and 20 years in one team uh, that it, it does seem criminal not to have him you know in a Atlanta Brave uniform only the third hit tonight base hit with one out and you see there and to me this is one of the aspects that is really going to be fun to watch is to see Smoltz talking to some of the young pitchers and going over different things and how they grip a baseball, how they approach situations. I mean, he's like having an extension of your coaching staff. Well, you know, a lot of them have sliders and everything, and that's pitch that right now that he's showing. But when one pitch he has that very few of the Cardinal starters have is the splitter. Right. I remember we came through San Diego, and I guess it was two years ago, Al, and we had a shot inside their dugout and it was David Wells right. with Greg Maddox talking with Jake Peavy and, and Peavy was right between them and they both were just you can see they were talking baseball for about seven innings. It's invaluable. No doubt about it and, and you know. That's a circle they, change yeah, there. Yeah circle change and you know you just you know these two. Wainwright when he was a young pitcher in the Atlanta Braves organization the guy that. He looked to for leadership was John Smoltz. He taught him pretty well. That's past Brendan Ryan. That's one he finally couldn't come up with. What's going on out there? I thought for sure he'd get that. <laughs> Gets everything else. Well, because a man on, he couldn't play as deep. <laughs> You're probably right. Yeah, I mean, seriously. Yeah. And uh, a right hander now getting loose in the Cardinal bullpen. Yeah, and look at the ball slicing there, and he just. Playing a little bit in the hole. I know it's going to slice towards him, but you see that he's in the middle of the dirt infield where if the man is not on first base, he's probably a step on the outfield grass. He makes that play. Reyes warming up along with Kyle McClellan. If going back to Tony Gwynn for just a moment, uh, I did an interview, Al, probably about five, ten years ago with Tony Gwynn. On Camel X Radio, and I had four different coaches ask me to give them copies of the interview so they could play it for their teams. And just in that 10 to 15 minutes of the interview, which he was very gracious in giving of his time, his approach to hitting. And the one thing that he pointed out as being one of the great moments in his career was in the All Star game of 1992. They got Ted Williams to come back to San Diego. This is his hometown. Right. And throw I out the first then. pitch. 
and he said it was the first time Gwen said that he ever talked to Ted Williams and Tony Gwynn it was right in the middle of him winning eight batting titles but he said it was probably the most valuable conversation he ever had and and one of the things if I remember right is Ted Williams talked to him about driving the right. ball that's exactly right and you know his ability to and the next year after that conversation Tony Gwynn had the most home runs and I believe RBIs in, in his career I think it's 17 was the best he had yeah but I mean he was more like a single digit you know eight, seven eight type like guy and, and after that conversation he started hitting with more authority we were asking I said and that's a check swing and a, a strikeout I said he had eight batting titles is there one that stands out above the rest and he said well if I had to pick one he said probably 1989 and the reason was for Tony Gwynn he had six hits in his final eight at bats and that edged Will Clark and uh, of course Tony Gwynn had a lifetime average of three thirty eight. I was here you know for that uh, all star game and was lucky enough to participate in the old timers game before that and Ted Williams was in our clubhouse and I was. You know, I wanted to talk to him and so I, I asked Gibson and some of the other guys I said you know can I go up and talk to Ted Williams and they said oh by all means you know just talk baseball to him and you know I approached him and, and it was unbelievable how gracious he was you know but he only wanted to talk about baseball I think he could have got slipped some questions in on fishing <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee he, that and here's Tony Gwynn Junior. 1994 he had 394 and he could very well have hit 400 if not for the strike. I remember standing on the line for that old timers game it was Hall of Famer Lou Brock Hall of Famer Enos Slaughter Hall of Famer uh, Bob Gibson from the Cardinals and Hall of Shamer Albert Bosco. It's good company right there. Oh yeah. One one pitch. Ground ball up the middle. There he is again. Lead Schumacher. Oh, they're going to say he's safe. And oh, not he, on the bag. You may get an argument there, but from, you know, we're a long ways away in a higher distance, but no argument, but it sure looked like he was on the bag, didn't it? Sure Still did. a terrific play by, by Brendan Ryan, and he does save a run. There's the flip back. Oh, uh, well, he, he, yeah, he missed it the first time. And he tried to resell it by re-stepping on it. But Tony's probably going to make a pitching change now, but he does save a run by keeping it on the infield. So good call by our second base umpire. And McClellan coming in and David Eckstein representing the tying run when we come back. It's five to one Cardinals bases loaded and the former Cardinal David Eckstein. First pitch up and in by Kyle McClellan. Now Kyle McClellan has done an excellent job coming in with inherited runners. He picked up his fourth win last night and you see the numbers the fourth win last night 11 holds but last Saturday he only allowed his second inherited runner to score out of 22. Now this could be the situation late in the season a uh, season that you see maybe uh, John Smoltz in right you know John Smoltz with 154 career saves they all came after brilliant first time in the rotation you know and then he had Tommy John surgery so they eased him in the uh, bullpen coming out of there and Brendan Ryan across the diamond and Eckstein strands the bases loaded. Good work by Kyle yet again. Top of the ninth and there's a look at Joel Pinheiro a chance to win this ball game for the Cardinals as uh, he would pick up his 12th of the season our pitch by pitch feature presented by Chevrolet sinker then they gets the ball up for a strikeout then there's that slider he goes around on for his seventh strikeout. Pinheiro goes seven and two thirds four hits. One run earned. 
walks two, strikes out seven. The one run was a solo home run. And Kyle McClellan comes in, does his job. Well, we've got the postgame show coming up. Jim is with us. What's coming up, Jim? Pat Paris is with Jack Clark. Brendan Ryan breaks out. They'll look at Brendan's power surge tonight. Runners beware. They'll look at Yadier Molina's throwing handiwork tonight. And of course, we'll get Tony LaRusso's take on tonight's ball game. It's all coming up after the game. For now, it's back to you guys. Okay, thanks. Ryan Webb into the ball game. This is his tenth appearance of the season, and he's given up a home run and opponents hitting uh, over 300 against him. He's the son of former Major League pitcher Hank Webb. No record, but an ERA over six. Just recalled August 7th from Triple A. And the first pitch is taken for a strike by Molina. Ronnie Molina, Brendan Ryan. Pitcher spot is due up. Grounder up the middle, gloved, bobbled, and they'll still get Molina. Let's take a look at our Hardy's prime cut of the game. And here it is, Brendan Ryan with a grand slam back in the second inning, his second home run of the year. And first career major league grand slam. And what a thrill. All the cushion that Pinheiro needed, but Tony still sweating out the final three outs. Trevor Miller is warming up. Brendan Ryan has been intentionally walked, grounded into a double play in the Grand Slam first time up. Five to one Cardinals here in the top of the ninth. And Khalil Green has moved to the on deck circle. Hope he hears a nice ovation. Need a crowd to do that. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> and most of them are Cardinal fans. That's right. <laughs> one ball, one strike. And the bottom of the seventh at Chavez Ravine, where Dodgers leading six to two over the Cubbies. Cardinals could have a seven game lead by the end of the night. One one pitch. And five in the loss column. The Cardinals have got a couple extra games on the Cubs. Cardinals return home and they will play nine games against sub 500 teams. Still got to play play well. Slowly hit towards third. It's gloved and they'll get Ryan by a step at three with Houston and then three with Washington and Milwaukee. Khalil Green pinch hitting. Your attention, please, for the Cardinals pinch hitting in the pitcher spot number three, Khalil Green. Nice ovation. Yes. Without a crowd. The 211, five homers, 23 RBIs. Much better of late. He's had RBIs in four of his last seven games. He had one of those tough little hitting streaks going four or five games where three or four of the efforts was pinch hitting. Probably his best series of the year was. When he came back against Kansas City at Kauffman Stadium. And a home run in each of the first three games, uh, or all three games in that series. Ooh. 
Here's a 2 2. Powell back. Only working over that scorecard. Adrian Gonzalez will be the first hitter, and you have to imagine you might want to go with Trevor Miller in that spot, and then you have a switch hitter, and then Kuzminov. Trevor is warming up. It's not a save situation, so we'll see if he gets the entire inning. And Green strikes out. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Budweiser who thanks her for being a designated driver by Bank of America Cardinals banking only at Bank of America lock in 149 a gallon for a year's worth of gas visit your St. Louis Hyundai dealers today and by Ameristar more casino more fun Trevor Miller into the ballgame 50 second appearance overall they are just hitting 190 against him, but uh, the lefties, boy, he is tough. One of the best in baseball. Eight for 75, 107 average, picked up his fourth win Sunday, and has a winner hold in each of his last four games. Had a couple days off because he had pitched in nine of the last 10 games, so told me that Marty Mason even hit his glove. And a right hander getting loose for Tony La Russa in the bullpen. Yeah, Jason Mott's getting loose. There you see the differential, the righties and lefties get a left hander and then a switch hitter that's weaker from the right side on deck. It's unique you come to San Diego and they actually had a, a nice little uh, presentation for Bill Mazeroski here. Of all things. Really? <laughs> what was that in reference to? Well, I was just walking through the, the concourse and there it was. Little shrine to Bill Mazeroski here in San Diego. And I think Bill is a native of, of Pennsylvania. I know that's where he lives and made his claim to fame with the Pirates, but I'm sure there's some connection. Bottom line, it's for the love of the game. Al, all the great moments, and of course, Bill was part of the famous moment in 1960. We could probably do one of those uh, six degrees of separation. Absolutely. <laughs> Mazeroski, right? That's right. Two more, Tony, and then you can kind of smile. Semi smile. Headley, a switch hitter, but weaker from the right side. And then you have Kuzminov. Kuzminov, who's straight from the right side, so Figured Mott you, will have to get ready yeah, for him. You're going to have to get Mott in, no question about yeah, it. Yeah. One out in the 0 1 pitch. Even though Miller has been very good against those righties and lefties, but as you mentioned, you're trying to get him, you know, for the most part, facing only lefties, and he had the two nights off, so if you want him to go back to back to back, they're being very cautious in that regard. 0 2 pitch. Uh, he usually didn't throw a lot of pitches. But you know you could you could totally understand Tony if he did take him out after he retires this batter because you want him available for the entire weekend before they have the off day on Monday. 0 2 pitch. And a swing and a miss and Trevor Miller's got the first two. Well, we'll see. And here, yeah, comes, here comes Tony. Tony. Yep. He's going to go to the right hander. And good work once again by Trevor Miller. And so Mott coming into the ballgame, trying to get that final out here in the ninth of a 5 1 lead for St. Louis. So Jason Mott tries to get the final out in this ballgame tonight. First pitch swung on and missed. Our player of the game at shortstop. And that is Brendan Ryan, a grand slam back in the second. Always makes it nice plays defensively, but boy, he was the hitting star tonight. And that's strike two. 
Be good to see Mott finish with uh, something positive in this point and having the handshakes out there and get the final out. And I always believe that uh, when you get a guy that's struggling a little bit, needs a little boost of confidence, that is a is a great remedy to get that final out and get those handshakes, knowing that you're you know doing. A big part to a victory and he just did with the strikeout. So three pitches the strikeout and the Cardinals take game one of this series. And it's win number 70 for the Cardinals. They are now 70 and 53. Brendan Ryan with the grand slam tonight. The Cardinals win it five to one. Post game show coming up. Game is over with the Cardinal victory against the Padres. Jack Clark and I stand by to break this one down. Uh, Jack. This will not uh, go down in the annals of baseball history. They're one of the most thrilling games, but it certainly was an impressive win by the Cardinals. Another great start by a Cardinal starter. Uh, Joel Pinera was outstanding tonight. Keeps giving the, uh, the team what they need. Great pitching and uh, timely hitting by Brendan Ryan. A great night by him offensively. We always talk about his defense. Offensive tonight, he was really good. Exactly right. Much more on that coming up. Plus, after taking two of three from the Dodgers in L.A., the Cardinals head down I-5 to San Diego. Could the Redbirds stay red hot? Yes, they could on this West Coast wing. Joel Pinheiro on the hill. We'll go inside the numbers on just how good the Cardinals' top three starters have been this season. Plus, we'll take you back to San Diego for player reaction and Tony LaRusso's postgame thoughts as well. And we'll welcome John Smoltz to the Redbirds. Happy birthday, Al Roker. The sun is always shining, and it's always beautiful on U.S. Cellular Cardinals Live, and it's next. Welcome to U.S. Cellular Cardinals Live. Maybe better this time. Deep left field to the wall. Grand slam for Brendan Ryan. Four to nothing Cardinals. Brendan Ryan, his second home run of the season, a grand slam. First career grand slam for Brendan Ryan and both of his home runs this season turn out to be the game winning RBIs provided off the bat of the Cardinals shortstop and did it with his defense as well. And the Cardinals win it 5 1 tonight in San Diego, the first of a four game set. And the Cardinals take one step closer to being the fourth team in Major League history to reach 10,000 wins tonight. Win 9,999. The champagne will be on ice tomorrow night. And perhaps Jack and I will pop the cork uh, and celebrate win number 10,000. Hello, everybody. Welcome inside our Fox Sports Midwest studio in St. Louis. It's a late night edition of U.S. Cellular Cardinals Live alongside the Ripper, Jack Clark. I'm Pat Paris. Coming up, we're going to take you back to Southern California for player reaction. Tony LaRusso's postgame thoughts about the victory. We'll break down. Joel Pinheiro is very nice start. Talk about how good the top three starters have been this season for the Cardinals. And we'll hear from the newest Redbird starter, John Smoltz. Before we get to all that, though, Jack, a, a, a win in uh, a stretch on the West Coast is always big. But I thought it was important, and you can speak to this better than I can. When you face a team that you know is down, undermanned, you uh, could have the uh, possibility of playing down to that competition. I didn't see that tonight from the Cardinals. No, they didn't. And, you, you know, they didn't give away any at-bats. Uh, Pinero made his pitches. They went out and took care of business. They, and you have to. You got Cardinals 20, you know, trying to get 20 games over. You're playing a team that's 20 games under and uh, going nowhere. So you have to go take it to them. You know, it was a big hit in the first inning by Brendan Ryan to give uh, Pinero some, some runs, give him the lead early. Also sent a message to the – to the Cubs right down the road there in L.A., you know, what was going on, too. So, you know, they're, do, they're doing all the right things, sending all the right messages. And, but it's a game, like you said, Pat, exactly. You cannot – you have to play up to, you know, your team and your abilities and can't worry about what's going on over the other side. And when you have them down, you put your foot on their neck and you just step on it and you just keep going. So, you know, they'll, uh, they should step on it again tomorrow and get that 10,000th win. Cardinals with the Grand Slam tonight. The Cubs surrender a Grand Slam tonight in L.A., and so it could be seven games uh, when that game goes final. We'll let you know about that. Don't forget you can get involved in U.S. Uh, cellular text time by sending us a question or comment. Jack and I are going to answer those a little later on. 432-432 is the number to uh, text. Please include your first name where you're texting from as well. Standard text messaging rates do apply. Right now, let's head back to the field at Petco Park. Short time ago, our Jim Hayes catching up with Brendan Ryan, our Mid-America Chevrolet dealers player of the game. Jim? 
some very nice defense from Brendan Ryan tonight. Also a grand slam in the second inning. Brendan, 3-1 uh, pitch in the second. You you went deep. Take us through that at bat, if you will. Um, yeah, I got the count 3-1. Um, trying to get him with a fastball, and he just missed a few times. Had the green light 3-0, didn't like it, and uh, just got a fastball over the plate. I was really just trying not to hit a ground ball, and uh, found the barrel and found its way in the seats, luckily. It wasn't just offense tonight, but also defense, and I think folks that see you play are saying, You've taken it to a new level. I don't know if you see it that way. Is it just opportunity? Is it something that you're doing differently? Well, anytime Pinero's on the on the mound, I'm going to get a lot of chances in the field, and and uh, that's beautiful. Thing, beautiful thing about baseball is just uh, you know you see something new every day, or or you just get a different kind of chance. And uh, I got an awkward one out there off Adrian Gonzalez, and uh, you know you got Albert over there who's going to pick everything. So I just got to get in the vicinity and. And, uh, and we're having fun right now. I know defensively you say you have the, pro the approach. You want the ball hit to you. Yeah, it's more fun. I don't want to fall asleep out there. And we got guys that get ground balls. So it just makes it all the more fun. And, uh, and that's what it is. I know in L.A. Uh, you had about 100 folks at each game. Not as many here in uh, San Diego? Oh, uh, no. I had quite a few, though. Probably uh, 30 or 40, something like that. A lot of aunts and, uncle, aunts and uncles, cousins, buddies. And, uh, yeah, it's 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 pretty fun. We're going to go to the well one more time. Last right. thing. What would De Niro say about the Grand Slam? He hit it good. He hit it good. You did. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> We're going to send it back to you. <laughs> All right, Jim. He did hit it good. Uh, that's exactly right. So let's go uh, view from the booth now and go upstairs at Petco Park. It's Dan McLaughlin, our Bosky, rejoining us from San Diego to put a, put a nice big bow on the uh, package that is a Cardinal victory, number 70 of the season, guys. Yeah, it's win number 70 for the Cardinals. We're going to take a look, though, at, at something on the losing end, and that's Tony Gwynn, and, and he really showed us something with his speed here tonight. Well, he played extremely well defensively. He's got great speed, so it really allows him to track balls down. Just a high fly ball here, but this was a great play. Really couldn't do it justice. That was off the bat of Albert. And as a hitter, he got a couple hits in this ball game. This is a single. Rasmus two-base error turns it into and over at third base but you can have speed but you have enough speed to beat the bullet that Yachty throws and the answer is no and he threw out two here tonight later in the show we'll preview Kyle Loesch going in game number two tomorrow night let's send it back to you all right gentlemen thank you look forward to that preview coming up right now we're going to show you the uh, highlights scoreless game in the top of the second base is loaded for Brendan Ryan they were just talking about it and the uh, Cardinal shortstop muscles up on this one Ryan crushes it to left center first career grand slam second homer of the season sixth of his young career passing Adam Wayne right now with those six homers now just one behind former Cardinal great John Rodriguez J Rod with seven Padres get one back in the bottom of the inning Thanks to Kyle Blanks, the San Diego rookie, sneaks it over the wall against Pinero. Ninth of the year for Blanks makes it 4-1. All nine of those homers have come since the All-Star break, so that rookie finding his way. Some same score in the sixth. Runners at the corners for Yadier Molina with one out. Grounds one to short. Only play to first, allowing Matt Holiday to score. Let's take another look at this. The reason why it wasn't a double play is because they started the runner. And DeRosa makes it to second, so they go to first. Yadier's 43rd RBI makes it 5-1. That would be plenty. For Pinero it goes seven and two thirds innings, allowing just one run while striking out seven. No seven Ks equals his season high. He did walk two batters for just the second time in his 12 starts, but Pinero earns his sixth straight win and 12th of the season. The Cardinals have won nine uh, straight when he takes the hill, which is impressive enough. And the Cardinals, with the victory 5 1, go 17 games over 500 for the first time this season and so they're quickly approaching that plus 20 mark that Tony La Russa always talks about so much. It's Brendan Ryan providing all that power and it's Joel Pinheiro doing the job on the hill and Jack uh, the plus 17 we talk about Tony's magic mark of uh, actually getting to plus 20 means that you're going to finish at uh, 92 and uh, or yeah 91 and 71 which would be enough to win the division easily obviously well you know they just taken one game at a time you know I mean that's up that's up for us we talk about that you know but I'm, I'm sure all those players and John's the new guy John Smoltz will be one of the first guys in there to talk about 
tomorrow's ball game and that's it. You know, that's the way you think. You, you take care of that. You don't want to embarrass the other team. You don't want to uh, go past them and say we're going to sweep them. They're nothing. We can't beat them. You know, you just take care of business tomorrow. See how that game evolves. You know, that's one thing that's great about this game. You never know what's going to happen. That other team is going to show up. We'll see what happens. You know, we showed a highlight of Tony Gwynn there. You know, and that was about their only highlight. And, uh, you know, they might not have even that tomorrow. So, um, Kyle Lowe needs to go out there and, and do what he's been doing and, um, you know, repeat what he saw tonight. And, and he has the information now to do that. So, um, you know, the whole series looks good and is set up well for them. And, uh, you know, you got Carpenter and Smoltz on the back end of this deal. So, you know, the only thing that's important right now is that game tomorrow. And, but Pinero took care of his business. Yachty was great behind the plate tonight, threw out a couple guys, showed why this team is a first place club and uh, wants to win this division and why the Cardinals usually do. Uh, you know, contend. Let's talk more about Joel Pinheiro and easily he is our Gila Tech king of the hill. He goes seven and two thirds. Looked like he was going to get all the way through eight. Uh, just ran into a little bit of problems. But uh, while he did walk two batters, which is surprising for him, uh, seven strikeouts a, uh, equaling his uh, season high shows you that uh, things were going very well for him against a an undermanned and young ball club in the pocket. And he was struggling a little bit early finding the strike zone, you know, but uh, he settled in and he got loose and, and uh, you know, Al made a comment, you know, he's a little too strong early maybe, and that's probably true with a sinker baller, you know, so, you know, he relaxed a little bit and then he got that movement back on his ball. And, then, you know, for the most part, he's facing a team that uh, doesn't have much of a chance against a pro like him. So he pretty much, uh, you know, wore him out the rest of the game. Got the feeling when it was 4 nothing, it was uh, well in control. And yeah. when it was 5-1, to one, it was uh, pretty much wrapped up. Some food to thought brought to you by Jack in the Box. And it is a look at what Carpenter, Wainwright, and Pinheiro have done this season compared to the other Cardinals starters. And in 70 starts, you've got an ERA of 2.7. Zero and look at the strikes to walks, strikeouts to walks ratio. Jack is just gaudy, and that's compared to the 55 starts made by others uh, for the Cardinals and an ERA of almost five. But uh, you talk about 30, 336 strikeouts to 92 walks. Uh, that is a formidable uh, one-two-three punch. Uh, I don't know that uh, anybody in baseball right now can match that. Well, no, I'll tell you right now, nobody can. And what you're seeing there is some history. And uh, we're, we're got first-hand first -hand seats every night to watch that. And, you know, it's pretty special. Those numbers don't lie. And they are so gaudy. How do you get those type of numbers? They're throwing strikes. The other team's going up there knowing these guys throw strikes. We've got to be aggressive at the plane. But you can't hit it because everything's moving. Everything's cut. Everything's sinking. Those big breaking balls, those big curveballs that those guys have. Nobody else really in the league has stuff like that. And then if you do get to them, then you come with McLeod, who repeats and has the same kind of hook like the other guys. So, you know, they're in pretty good shape right now. And then uh, you get to Ryan Franklin there in the end, and, you know, lights are out there too. So they're firing on all cylinders right now. They're having fun. And, um, you know, they just have to keep taking care of business. You can't, nothing's finished. There's no exclamation point in anything yet. And uh, they're very serious. And, you know, they'll play, like they say, they play a hard nine. They also play till that last out. And it's never over till it's over. And they need to keep that attitude and, uh, you know, bring, bring that same intensity every day. And, you know, I, why wouldn't you? It's fun. You shouldn't, can't wait to get up there and hit again. Yeah, can't wait for the next game. And uh, you uh, always know that with Tony La Russa managing, he won't let these guys get complacent at all and uh, rest on their laurels plus 17. Speaking of the Cardinal manager, we'll listen in to his post-game comments when we continue on U.S. Cellular Cardinals Live.